Um, we're working on today is a 2008 Chevrolet HHR with the Ecotec 2.2 four-cylinder engine. And if you come over here, what we're doing basically is we're going to be changing out the spark plugs. Um, I've gone ahead and we pulled this off, but in order to get to here, you have to pull off the housing for the um, for the air filter. And basically, I've gone ahead and done that, and I've taken the air filter out. It's, a, it's right over there. It's a K&N, uh, one of those million-mile filters. So I've gone ahead and recharged it, put some oil back in there, and put that back in here. And basically, the way this housing works is you have the connection for your throttle body here, and you have a couple of connections here where it hooks onto the engine to come over here. Basically, it's got one, two, three, and then it fits up on top here, and it goes here. And the only thing you have to do is disconnect disconnect this little hole here that goes from the throttle body to the intake and that gets the housing off and once the housing comes off what you're basically looking at is you're looking at a system like this which has your coils and these coils go over your spark plugs which in turn go into your cylinder heads um, some people on YouTube will go ahead and tell you that you have to connect disconnect these wiring harnesses you're plugging this out you don't need to do that all you do is pull it off and it's pretty hard to get them into a different cylinder because the way the links are so it's pretty much one, two, three, four. I just started out, and I just went in the middle of those two, and then I go to the outside. Um, the car does have 123,000 miles on it, so I've never taken the plugs out. So you want to be careful. Um, basically using your 5 eighths um, socket, and you're putting it down on the, on the uh, spark plug. And then you're going ahead and also um, the ones to take these off. These little, can you see these little bolts right here? These little bolts here that go ahead and take everything. They get everything open here to get the coil off. These are 10 millimeter. See, I haven't tightened them down yet. So those are 10 millimeter, and that pops this out, and then your socket is, what you want to do is you put it on this, and then you go ahead and you get this. Now, I've already loosened this one up, and I actually put a new plug in here. I'm just kind of demonstrating this for you guys, but when you do it, you'll be loosening it up. And you always want to make sure you get the socket on the plug. You don't want to crack the ceramic housing and break it, and then what happens is the spark plug is loose. Um, can you get in there? Can you take a look and see where the spark plug is? It's right down in here, and then you have to go ahead and take a... I just go ahead and take a um, needle nose pliers and pop it out. I don't have it quite loose enough yet. And I'll just show you guys the one spark plug. We're not, they don't have to go through all four because the process is the same, obviously, with four as it is one. And let's see. Let's see if I can get this thing out of here now. Naturally, I had this out of here pretty easy before. Like I said, this is the replacement one that I'm trying to get out of here now. And it's giving me the hard time to get out the second time. But let's see, that may have done it. And then we go here. Take your needle nose. And where is it? There we go. Okay, there we go. So that's the spark plug, and it comes out. And as you can see, I've already put some anti-seize compound, which is good because I'm taking out again because it looks like it went down a little bit too far on the threads. So we'll just re-clean the anti-seize up a little bit. You don't want to put too much on there. Uh, these are basically the new plugs. The old plugs actually didn't look that bad for 123,000 miles, um, but there was some buildup along the electrode, and I decided that that was probably hurting the spark a little bit. What else you can do is you can check the gap. Pretty much they come pre-gapped at 40, at the 43, which is what you want it to be. So the gapper tool tells you, you know, 0 .040, so we want to be at 0 0.43. I looked it up on the manual online, and that's how I figured that out. And yeah, they're pretty much 43. It's gapped, so it's okay. And so you basically just go ahead and put it back in there. You know, it will drop it in there a little bit because you can't quite get your fingers in all the way. And you start it out, always start it out by hand like this. You don't want to start using the socket and until you have it on there because if, if you, for some reason you don't have it, um, the threads in there, put it in there properly. And you're not, uh, you're, you could be actually be on the spark plug itself. I've done it many times where I've actually cracked the spark plug, the ceramic part, the insulator. And then at that point... Um, you're going to have problems because then you have to replace it. So now we've got the spark plug in here. It takes about, it takes just a few turns. Once it catches, you'll feel it getting a little tighter. And there we go. So we're pretty tight. Let's go one little, one more. Mm, and that's it. You don't want to go too tight. Again, if you go too tight, you'll crack it and you'll have problems. And then that's that. And then you just put your coil back on. Coil goes back on. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. Goes back in here. Put that back on there, and we've got our 10 millimeter with a little bit of an extension here. Like I said, generally speaking, I do these things by hand initially just to get them tight, and once they're tight, then you grab out your 3 eighths, and put it in here. Something just that should be tight enough, and we already did these plugs, so we'll do this one here. 
same thing. But actually, you know what I'll do? I'll show you guys this again. So you just take your 10 millimeter and your 10 millimeter. The bolt, once you loosen up, you just unscrew it by hand. It takes a little bit of time to unscrew it by hand, but there we go. And then this just kind of, you just kind of wobble it back and forth. It's just a little, basically what this, it's just a connection here. When you have a connection here and it's just um, like a, like a vacuum type of thing with the rubber onto the spark plug. And then that's, that's the spark plug that I put in the first uh, cylinder. I did this before we started filming and we'll double check it. They put it on there. Make sure we're nice and tight. See, yep. perfect, done. So that one's all set. And then we go, just the same thing. Put this coil on there, put it on there. Go ahead, put your 10 millimeter bolt. Let's get it started by hand. I always like doing things by hand. The reason I'm not using, I don't know if you guys notice, I'm not using any power tools. I'm not using any power tools um, on anything. The reason I don't use any power tools is sometimes if things are rusty or they're stuck and you go ahead and you use a power tool that has a lot of torque, you can go ahead and instantly strip something. You'll either strip a thread or you'll crack a spark plug or you'll do some, some kind of damage here. And you really don't want to do that because this is, you know, on top of your engine. So I just kind of do things by hand. I think manually is a little bit easier way uh, to go. And again, you just... There you go. Nothing nothing fancy. doesn't have to be too tight. The, you know, it's, this coil, is. this thing's not going anywhere once you tighten up. And I've already done this one here in the middle too. So... You just kind of hold this with your hand to keep it so it doesn't go to the side. So that's it. So these three are all done right now. You just saw me put the new one in here, and you saw this one here take out. Same thing. Put it in. Put it. We're gonna finish up this last one. I'll do it off camera because you know there's no point in wasting another ten, five or ten minutes. Each one takes probably about ten minutes total. Maybe even maybe only five, depending on how good you do it. And then once you're all your spark plugs are done, you have them gapped, and the gap is 43. Like we already told you about that. You put your anti-seize compound on there. Um, this is my uh, this will be my last plug here uh, for the day. Replacing this, I've done all four. They're like eight bucks a piece, and uh, that's it. And then we go ahead and just put our little cover back on. You have to see the cover over here. We we'll just put the cover back on on the, these two here, one here, and it goes on top of here. You just got to make sure you take this off so that way you can get it off because this is kind of big in the way. And you put it on here, and then the only thing you really have to take off is right here for the throttle body. Put that back on. And then, of course, you have to hook this back up, which is the air. This is the intake, the in inlet intake. Of course, this thing has got so many miles, it's so wasted. This is actually what pulls the air from the here uh, behind, the, behind the headlight and the fender to get the power. So when I put this back together, it's going to be a little bit messed up, so it may be pulling a little bit of warm air from the uh, engine bay as opposed to everything coming from outside the engine. But it's not really going to affect the performance of the car or anything really too much. So that's about it. That's how you do the um, spark plugs. This is a Chevrolet HHR 2008, but this motor comes in a lot of GM vehicles. Um, Ecotec 2.2s, 2.4s, comes in Cobalts and all kinds of GM engines, kind of the same thing. It's an overhead cam engines, dual overhead cam. So you have one cam here, one cam here, your timing belt's over here. And basically that's really it. It's just a coil unplug design. Take them out, put them in. Just see, it'll take your time. If anything seems kind of a little loose to you just hold it and just kind of just get it loose. You don't want to, you know, also want to make sure that it's, you always want to make sure that the socket is over the spark plug like this. You see how it's on there? Because you can't really see in there. It's on there. There's been times when I've had it either right here and I've tried to turn it and it's gotten caught or this is going a little bit too long and you twist it and then you wind up cracking this housing and then the spark plug winds up getting cracked because you're actually doing it this way. That's that's, that's right there. That's the right way to do it. So you'd be this way and you might be here, you're here somehow and somehow I've done it a couple of times where this has been cracked and once you crack this then the spark plug is worthless and then you have to go ahead and take it out and if any of those chips fall in your engine you could have some problems. But you know, just like I said, you'll make it sure it's on there real nice and it just... That's tightening, that's loosening, you put your anti-seize compound, check your gap, you're all set. And then just put the housing back on, um, start the car up. Um, not really going to go through all the process of putting the housing back on, that should be self-explanatory. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching.